there's this smell in the air. The Amatan is there. Uh, the traffic is everywhere. Everywhere is rowdy in Lagos. And it looks as if everyone in the world is in Lagos at this time. And it, it can only mean one thing. It can only mean it's Christmas. It's my favorite time of the year. It's you tied. It's time to love, to share, and to give. And guess what? We have been giving consistent performance here on fan base with different kind of class of analysts and fans. And we want to thank you very much for being part of this production from the get-go. We are the gift that keeps giving. And it wasn't even Christmas then, but guess what? It is Christmas. So it delights me to say Merry, Merry, very Merry, Merry Christmas to all of you and yours. And Happy Boxing Day. You know, when I was younger, I used to think Boxing Day was the day where you box people, all right? But it's that day you open the gift that you got on Christmas Day. So how about we say let's get cracking? Our guest is an absolute... I don't want to leave our house. Guys, I, you know, I, I'm not going to say this on air, but I've tweeted it already. It's going to take a while for me to host another fan base edition with a male analyst because the kind of hospitality I get with the female analyst, especially this beautiful lady, is absolutely outstanding. So yes, Christmas tree is here. Red is the color. Fan base is the show. Let's get cracking, guys. Well, I'm in the house of... Um the Solis, and I like to call them Quantum Solis, the Quantum Solis family. Uh, this is Viola Solis Chupo, um, one of the finest female sports analysts in the country. And I, I, I specifically chose today, being Christmas Day, to come shoot this episode because, apart from that, she's a very, very hospitable person. I'm not going home after this. But, my lady, how are you? I'm fine. Merry Christmas. Thanks Mary, for coming on Christmas Mary, Day. Mary, 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 I'm Mary finally Christmas. on fan base. Yes, Mama, I made yes. it. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Okay, but we made it because, I mean, not every every time she appeared, you're all busy sitting with Viola to this triple. But let's just get right into it. She's wearing a back up jersey. And that just tells you, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Obvious, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why are you beefing me? No, Why are you no. jealous? I just feel for a one man team. Mm, well, it's okay. It's, it's all right. No. It hasn't always been a one-man team. And who even says it's a one-man team? <laughs> is it, guys, is Barcelona a one-man team? No. I think that's a conversation for another day. Yes, Are it you is. sure? Mm -hmm. We'll probably discuss it off-camera. Yes, yes. Yeah. I, think, I think I'd like to hear that. One thing <laughs> i also like to hear is, um, what are your thoughts? We need you to go to the comment sections and see how Game Week 18 panned out for you, especially for the fan base, um, FPL players, as well as general oh God. FPL players. Let's talk about the, um, the results from the weekend. Everton Arsenal. Yeah. Nil. Drab game. Very drab game. I mean, we have seen nil nil games a lot of times. We saw the El Clasico, you know, yeah. just last week. That it was, was nil nil, but it was an exciting yeah. game. There are many, many, many nil nil games mm. every week, every now and then, but this was utterly drab. There was. was nothing coming from Arsenal. There was mm. nothing coming from Everton. Yeah. Uh, the, both coaches got their tactics wrong. <laughs> it was just. A match that I needed to end, end yes, quickly. Even before 90 minutes, I agree. <laughs> and, and interestingly, Aubameyang came into that particular competition, that particular mm. game, um, having scored 90% of his goals away from home. So you can almost bet on Aubameyang getting a goal away from um, the Emirates. And unfortunately, Freddie Gilbert, in your mm. farewell um, game as a manager, you yeah. chose to go with a team that is almost inexperienced and at the same time, you cho I don't know, he coached Arsenal twice. Or rather four times as mm. a caretaker manager yeah, and in a way he didn't seem to have that control and maybe that's why the the board had to bring in a Mikel Ateta are you a fan Ateta? uh I wouldn't say I am okay. I wouldn't say I'm not okay. but I think um Arsenal are trying all they can okay. at the moment they are still in the post venga phase and we know how Manchester United have been since the, still they are still struggling are you know struggling. since the post um Ferguson uh time and right now you just keep trying and trying until you find that supposed yeah. successor so Absolutely. that's what they are doing at the moment but Lundberg uh <laughs> You know, I, I kind of raised an eyebrow when I found out that he would be joining Ate Ateta's team. But then I think it would be a good learning experience for him mm. because from the few games that he coached Arsenal, it was obvious he needs some he learning needs to do. Absolutely. I mean, he's not going to be learning from a very experienced manager because mm -hmm. that's not what Ateta is. True. But then he Ateta has this. gotten his bit of experience from a very experienced guy. Yeah. So Lundberg will be getting the bouncing. experience from that. So <laughs> Pep will somehow yeah. rub off yeah. on yeah. Lundberg. 
Bloomberg like, as like well. Logic, so that's good. I actually do like that logic. I mean, for Arsenal fans, um, for rather for Arsenal fans, they'll be thinking to themselves, maybe Ateta could be the man because maybe. It's, it looks as if it's a no pressure scenario. Ateta is coming to the helm. You're not expecting him to deliver the Champions League. You're not expecting him to deliver a lot of things. But hmm. what you're expecting him to deliver, though, will be stability. Yes. A bit of purpose going forward. Because Arsenal seems to be a very gutless, instantly very annoying football. Wow. Team. You're like, have you seen Arsenal play football? You see them. Did the 3 new As loss far, so be angry. I mean, they know. They, 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 <laughs> people know. King Lama, all of you, you know. The City game was very annoying. It was. Because... No, no, no attempt to get the ball. It was as if it was no urgency person. whatsoever. You know, there was that. So, I to do a street, a street selection. We'll beat Arsenal. <laughs> we'll, with we'll beat Arsenal. Arsenal and Ateta at the moment, you yeah. know, we were watching videos of Ateta when he just got into the Arsenal mm -hmm. training um, room and all of that. And he was telling the players and staff, you know, that you have a lot of work to do. That's yeah, right. uh, there is a lot of work to be done. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can't say he's going to be a strict or serious or great coach by just that video, sure. but then he. Like you said, all, all Arsenal really need now is stability. And of course, we know that they probably uh, need to get back into the Champions League because they are slowly becoming uh, European, Europa League regulars. Yes. And that is not the kind of level you want to see an Arsenal team. But then, even at the moment, it's ha it hasn't looked like they would even reach that Europa League this season as well. So I think what Arteta will be looking to do is, like you said, bring some balance some stability into mm. the team uh try mm -hmm. to qualify for the champions league or settle again for the europa league and you know just continue as it is right now they are in the europa league so they can go on for the title as well mm. but we know that they are not gunning for any premier league title but in the premier league they need that stability we cannot see us now go down true true well but i like i like every form of punch was training there Gone in as I'm being gone as <laughs> no pun intended. Yeah, that was intended as far as I'm concerned. Oh, intended, but all right. So, moving on at this time, let's talk about Master versus Apprentice. Aha, uh, -huh. uh, Frank Lampard versus Jose Mourinho. Mourinho losing his second um game to his former employees um in, in one month, first losing to Manchester United and then losing to, to um Chelsea. Chelsea. But the one thing for Chelsea yeah. was even more annoying because. Mourinho has in a way modeled this new Tottenham side to be very, very swashbuckling. They're strong. But we didn't physical. see that, yeah? Oof. Was we, annoying. We did not see that. It was very annoying. Um, was, was, was Chelsea outstanding in that game? Yeah, Chelsea were, and I think they needed to be outstanding at that time. They had had a rough couple of games, losing four of their last six yeah. thereabouts. Mm. So they really needed this game. To be honest, I didn't see them going all out like that. And to be honest, I was very impressed with William, who has been so underwhelming all season and he came you know came to the party at the right time scored two goals was the man of the match in my opinion yes he, he really had a good game i think um generally um i think jose morio probably underestimated chelsea and looked at their past four or five results and thought ah it's my boys they've been you know all know firing that. since i got here mm. and you know they'll, they'll get the job done and he didn't expect what he got i think he also got his tactics wrong i'm not sure i've said that so many times about jose Mourinho yeah. before yeah. but that was what happened and it's good to see that um frank lampard got this victory we saw how pumped he was yes, about he was it pumped. i mean he's still trying to prove himself we know how a lot of Arsenal fans raised their eyebrows and said he's not, you know, experienced enough to coach Chelsea at this time. Mm. And to be honest, I don't think he's done a bad job. Even when they were losing games, he has a very young team and now they are doing so good. Mm -hmm. I mean, his team did not do so well for me in the FPL this weekend. We'll come to that. Yeah. But they, they had a really good game. And yeah, it was yeah. good to see that yeah. Frank Lampard came out tops. Well, let's talk about Leicester. Have you been impressed this season? I have been absolutely impressed. In fact, a few weeks ago, I wrote something and said um, the, this season's EPL is a two-horse race. Mm -hmm. And it's not between Liverpool and Manchester City as it was last season. Mm -hmm. It's actually yes, between Leicester. Liverpool and Leicester City. And who would have thought, really? I yeah. think Brendan Rodgers has done absolutely well with this team mm. he's doing even Very better true. at the moment i mean we look back at leicester city of some seasons ago and you wonder is it the same team yes they had a fairy tale run a few seasons ago and won the epl but they haven't quite been the same since then and since post um, claudio ranieri but it's good to see them good like this again i mean whether they are not going to win the epl true. we know they are not going to win true. the epl but they have made a statement That's already true. and we do not expect them to see we do not expect to see them outside top four at mm. the end of the season. Mm. 
Well, it's been a fantastic conversation. But finally, um, City. City, <laughs> City needed a win. Desperately. They, they needed to, to remind themselves of mm. who they are. Champions, defending champions, but they've been struggling. Injuries, maybe? Or it's just the team getting to that climax and now decline? Yes, I think it's that decline. A little bit of injuries as well. They have been struggling with injuries. But then, uh, like you said, they needed that win desperately. Leicester City have been ahead of them in the last few weeks. Like I said, I yeah. thought it was a two-horse race. But now we're beginning to see maybe it might be three mm. after all. Mm -hmm. Or maybe it's a one-horse race and we're just waiting for Liverpool to be champions. We're waiting and we're waiting to see who will be second and third. Yeah. But they desperately needed that win. It was also, you know, a morale booster for them and we'll see how far they can go in the next two three weeks we do know for a fact that you're watching um fan base and we're looking forward to you um following your scenes here on and at the same time um follow by subscribing to this particular channel subscribe just, yes you just have to click. you gotta subscribe yeah you gotta subscribe thank you very much thank you you gotta subscribe we'll go for a quick break when we return it's time to talk fp of ulano this week hey who was in trouble this week which team was impressive this week and how did that team fare? Find out all this and more. Oh my God. Right this break. We'll be right back on Fan Base. You're welcome back to Fan Base. My name is Bella Solishuku and I have Babajide Guerrero with me. I'm Yo. the presenter now. Yeah. Yo. What was that thing about the, how did you say that thing? It's the example. Apprentice. And the Master. Yeah, the, the master. master. So I'm the, <laughs> I'm the Apprentice that is about to take over from the master so yes. it's time to talk fpl oh where do i begin abby where do you begin what, what befell you this week anyway this last fpl week was an absolute disaster for me and i don't know where to begin you know i've i've shuffled my team over and over you again this season though. i haven't though i haven't even used my triple captain yet this is my first fpl season oh, okay. and people warned me you're going to be frustrated you're going to yeah. be tired yeah. i've been frustrated <laughs> but i'm having fun as well so yeah. this last week huh I, mean, I think I probably made a lot of bad decisions, though. Tell me. Yeah, I got my tactics wrong. Tell me. So now you're a Mario. Okay. I'm okay. a Mario. Okay. I was such a Mario this past week. Uh, I had 32 points. Not the, not the worst I've seen, trust Even me. the average was 38 points. So 32 points was just terrible. And I see that the highest was 100. Yeah, and was I'm him. wondering, are people using jazz for FPL? Oh, my God. The, the sauce tricks. Some people use that. Do you know somebody, the guy with the 100 points, Captained, I think he captained Danny Ings. Ah, how can you captain? Who captains? Who would Danny you? Who, why would you even think about doing exactly. that? Danny Ings. So, in a way, it happens that sometimes people maybe make correct guesses, but it's not that bad. I've seen 18 ah. points. You know, I'm looking at my team now, and the people who I was really in goal for you in goal, Schmeichel. Schmeichel has been in goal for yeah, me, and yeah. he luckily got five points because mm. he made a lot of really beautiful yeah. and crucial saves. Yeah. I mean, he considered three goals, but yeah. five points for three goals is not bad, not bad decent. In defense, I had Bednarek, Diego Rico, okay. and Leicester City's Evans. Okay. It was looking like Rico was doing good during the game, yeah. and then he got a yellow card. Yeah dude why <laughs> why and i got one point from him and what's yeah. worse now is that he's suspended for yeah. the next game so yeah. i have to either sell or bench him yeah. and i really don't know who i'm to bench him for because bench, i have uh robertson on my bench okay. i bench him this weekend because i mean this last week because they were at the club world cup yeah. and all of that Which is, uh, yeah Bednarek got me two points okay. evans got one point because okay. of course leicester city's considered three goals mm -hmm. In my midfield, first off, Jorginho didn't even start. Ouch. So, Ouch. that was already wrong. Okay, so who was, who, who, was, who was his replacement, by the way? What do you mean? His replacement. Who did you replace him with? No, he didn't start the uh, game, but he was in my team. Oh, he was I in my team, but he didn't start. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Thank you, Frank Lampard. <laughs> yeah, he didn't start the game. Madison, yeah. who has actually been getting me quite yeah. a number of points wasn't that impressive i was saying guy please an assist just an, an assist alone would do me good Anything. but he got Anything. two points yeah, are you counting know. my points yes, and that yes, please yeah. count yes, sterling yes. who i have been considering for quite some time yeah i think he's been the most consistent person in my team so the person i have not bent oh, really? or, or sold, sold okay. yet and i think i have given him two more weeks and okay. i'm not doing it again we Battle. move on 
But he got me five points because he got an assist, yes. which was hmm, all right. I'll consider you for next week. Then Donka, oh God, two points. Okay. Mm -hmm. In attack, someone I've been considering also to sell off actually got me my most points, seven Jimenez? points. Jimenez. Okay. okay. I mean, I had, Jimenez, I had Jimenez at the start of the season. Okay. And then he so wasn't he scoring, place. he wasn't assisting. Yeah. And I sold him and got Puki, who was scoring. Uh, and then Puki stopped scoring and stopped assisting. And I sold him and got Jimenez back. You see that? I don't even know what I'm oh doing. Oh my God. <laughs> I love this. But then Jimenez got me seven points. Yeah. The most points. Do you have Tammy Abraham? I have Tammy Abraham. I actually bought him like two weeks ago. Yeah. And of course, two points. You know what I do? I, I try to look at, if I bring in any player, I try to look at the next four fixtures. Yeah. I think you should think about taking in Jack Grealish. I think so. I have, yeah. I've actually been considering yeah, you should, you should that. Consider Jack and Grealish. then finally, my captain, Who? Harry Kane. Ah, no, no, brother. Oh, no. I was thinking, well, maybe I, mean, maybe I should have even captained Schmeichel <laughs> for <laughs> this week. I yeah, mean, yeah. he would have gotten really more points with that, that but really, really Captain Jimenez. So it's, it was a terrible week, yeah, but I'm looking to bounce back yes, have, with a bang it, it looks in match week 19. The, most of the guys you have have good fixtures for next week. It looks it, it looks like that already. Mm. As you got Rico, he got me um, one point. Um, he suspended, suspended though, now. so we have to bench him somehow. Well, I, in my own case, I had like what I had like a very low point, so it was 50 points. Uh, but, You're uh, balling Pope now. Was <laughs> <laughs> Pope was in goal. He had seven points. Um, Lundstrom as well. You need to get Lundstrom. Yes. He's affordable and he gets points as a midfielder and both as a defender. Hmm. Um, I got Jack Grealish, eight points. Um, Kevin De Bruyne was my captain because I thought he would carry oh, over that. Oh, great. Unfortunately, he didn't deliver. I could have, I should have maintained Verdi. Over, again, over a million users uh, maintained Verdi as a captain. And they he did. them with 18 points. Over me young, I scored so many goals away from um, home. Uh, got me two points and I'm going to sell him and send his family members <laughs> send them all back in. Alexander Trent Allen comes back to the team. Okay. And son, I thought that, okay, because my oh, son. Off, let me just bring son and then just keep that money for son got red card. Yes, I think he lost his head yeah, he for was, a yeah, moment. Yeah, I yeah, think he gets yeah. that spark yeah, every now and then. So yeah. well did a lot of points for people. Cantwell, yeah. I had yeah, Cantwell early in the season and now I'm regretting selling him. Yeah, but that's the you thing. Know. You can't get him all. But that's the thing with what, you know what's been happening I'm to me in this FPL? Every time I sell a player, he pops. He pops the next week. <laughs> did yeah. you guys plan it? Yeah, oh my days. But, but think about Danny Ings though. I think I'm going to, if I'm told I'm going to let any striker go, it's going to be for Danny Ings. He's in a good place. For um, now. For now. Ralph Arsenal has been able to get some good results from him. Mm. And his, his, his season is quite good. He's in double figures now. Yes, he is. Goals, um, Surprisingly. All right, so that's a lot we can take on the FBL. And when we come back, it's time to talk about the uh, preview. You can hear the knockouts. But we it's call Christmas. Banda. It's Christmas. It's exciting. We're fine. We're good. We're happy. It's merry. It's berry. Mm -hmm. It's chill. It's easy on the eye. It's fan base. We'll be right back after this. And so we flip the script. Uh, we're done with the first 18 set of fixtures in the Premier League. Remember, it's a 38 week uh, tournament, and Big 19 means it's a beginning of the games that we've seen, but it's a repeat in a way. So, home and away, remember. Yeah. So, um, Tottenham Hotspur will host uh, uh, Brighton. They are really, really beleaguered lately. Mm. But Brighton are having a good season uh, by their own standards. Bournemouth will um, play and host um, Arsenal. Aston Villa will play Norwich, and these two teams know themselves quite well. You know, from the first time um, at the championship, Chelsea will host Southampton. The Saints committing so much sin <laughs> at the moment because they have a terrible and shitty uh, backline going for them. It's not the first time. It, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Crystal Palace under um, Rogers, uh, Hodgson, I beg your pardon, um, looks quite good uh, recently. They will be playing at West Ham United. I still have no idea how Pellegrini still has a job. Outstanding is a word you shouldn't use for Manchester United. Uh, Manchester, this is outstanding here. My Don't United use is, that in the same sentence is, is right now. It's very far away. It's, it's quite terrible what United has been. Uh, they can't keep the consistency going. Right now, they will play Newcastle. They will be buoyed by the fact that they have uh, Paul Pogba back in their mix. And you rate him? Is, is, it, a, is it a top player? Uh, to be honest, he is. Mm. As much as he might have some attitude issues and Manchester United fans think he's not committed to the club anymore, yeah. especially after trying to force a move um, during the summer. But we saw the creativity he brought to the team when he came on during the last game. You know, he hasn't been 
he hasn't played since October. Yeah. When he came, he came on in the second half, and he was actually a little influential. And they got some of their best um, chances in that second half, yeah, even though sure. they could do absolutely nothing anymore. So I think his um, return to the team might actually do well. We call them Robin Hood FC now uh, because they are taking from the rich and, and giving the poor. Oh. It's ridiculous that Manchester United have been uh. doing. You know, descent against the big teams, and then that. they meet the likes of do, them, do. them, do, don't and they, they can't are, are get done? the results. So I think they should be able to pull this off. They definitely need to pull it off. What's going on? <laughs> you just oh, you won? Yes, I am. I didn't know. Now you know. I think know. now I won't need to say more. Uh, no. So, <laughs> okay, now I'm done. <laughs> but finally, the biggest game um, of the PL this particular weekend is first versus second. Two Boom. teams that um yeah let us start with letter l which like in football is lose but they've not lost in a while if mm. it, only if you think about um let's start losing to city losing has really not been in the dictionary of the other team liverpool absolute juggernaut of a season they've had uh, so far on that Jurgen club the game game pressing has been quite good they just won the club world cup and another trophy in the cabinet but you look as if this liverpool team if they bottle this one they can never win the game in their life they bottled it last season They've mm. bottled it a number of times. Mm. Liverpool fans, if you guys bottle, we are coming for you. <laughs> are we not coming for them? Yes, I've been coming for them. We are coming since. for you. Guys, yes, they know the names. I uh -huh. don't know mention names, but the fans of Liverpool have really been um, attacking me on social media. That I don't <laughs> speak too well about their team. But I, I, let me speak too well because it's Christmas and it's you tide yeah. and it's the feeling of love. So, yes, Liverpool, you guys have done quite well. No, not quite well. You guys have been outstanding in 2019. Outstanding. And I think it's, it's one of those seasons where you just have to give it to Liverpool really for every cent of the world. You also have to give it to you guys for being a staunch member of this family. Absolutely. Fan base. You also have to give it to her for being a guest today on Christmas where everybody's there eating chicken but she's there to come here and talk football with me and I want to say thank you so very much my lady. Thank you for having thank me. You. This thank has been so fun. Much. Yes. We will Wait, do, do you have people mm. on your show twice because I'd like to come well, in. Yes, here. because we will definitely. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, we will be coming again definitely before the end of the season. Maybe the, by that time we'll have another kind of angle to it. Maybe by that time Liverpool may have bottled. Maybe by that time um, everything may have toppled Chelsea. Oh gosh. Maybe by that time United will be number two or number three. Mm, and maybe three. Leicester City will be close to winning the title. A lot of maybe's and ifs. <laughs> a lot of maybe's and ifs. Her name is Biola Solis Chuku. Yep. And she's saying Bye. Merry Christmas. Guys, my name is Babaji De Guerrero. This is fan base. This is your base. Merry Christmas, guys. You go B. Bye for now. <laughs>